It was a pandemic and a parent went out to teach on days that felt scorched and like there was no creative energy bubbling. Nonetheless, a parent went out to teach for their children who needed to learn. And so they went back out to their back porch and there was an herb box and in that herb box was old soil and so they got out some new soil and they poured it in and they spread it out and they got their little packets of seeds. They had six different plots that they would enter the seeds into. They had two for chives and two for thyme and two for parsley. And so with their little digger tools and their garden gloves on, they made out the little circles in the soil and deposited those little seeds into that space. And taking their little tools, they dug up the earth on top of the soil. And they got out watering cans and they watered their earth just a bit. But in this parable of life, of parenting in pandemic, as they waited the days and weeks to come, certainly they figured that they would have herbs for the cooking and the tasting any moment now. Until one day, the six-year-old came out and she found in the box that indeed there was a little sprig and a sign of life for the parsley had come up. And as they waited over time, they saw the parsley grow. But as they looked out, there were six plots after all. And one, two, three, four, five, and six, only one of those plots had come up with anything. In five plots, there was no evidence that the seeds had been planted. How this felt so much like the reality of teaching and trying to parent in pandemic, especially for parents who don't imagine themselves to be children educators, suddenly gifted with the breadth and opportunity to be with your children all the time. <laughs> and the fear that comes that you cannot be, as you know, you cannot be everything to them. And so you find the life lessons that exist in an herb box and say, it's okay to fail. There might be five times out of six in which you do not get something right. But without trying, there's no parsley to be had. There's no one place of evidence that the good soil has been there and all the ingredients have taken shape to make this growth possible. And so in these impossible places of the journey, I give thanks that Jesus was meeting people in all of their demands. He had a generous way as a teacher of framing things so that different able learners could hear them in different ways. He knew that stories were the key to capture people's hearts. And so he told parables. He scattered them out, much like the sower in today's parable. He was generous, sharing stories here and there, knowing that any kernel of any story might be just the one that hit the good soil in people's hearts. In any particular heart, it might be a story that resonated with their own vocation or way of being, something they knew to be true and then twisted it teased it out and invited in them deeper thought and imagination. Jesus is genius in this way. Our God is prodigious in this way, scattering out the seeds of potential out on every plot of land, in part because every plot of land everywhere is God's terrain, even the rocky part. That seeds that land and bounce off the rocky parts are just an evidence of the determination of God's love. That even if that seed never meets the soil, there is the belief from our God that says at some moment and at some point when the time is right, it could be the place of good soil. 
how I need a message of good soil in these times, friends, and so many parents around you. Perhaps your children or grandchildren are going through a similar pattern all across this county and country as we don't know what the school system will look like in the fall. I invite you to be in a covenant of prayer for these next several weeks as school administrators and teachers and parents try to figure out different plans. Now they are reaching and trying to scatter out into the different options, hoping that they can indeed land on something. And I think it is our work to trust that the something that they land on, even though it might not be the cup of tea for everybody, that it would have a way forward that the eager and learning minds of our children might in some way be satisfied. That even if one lesson plan and another doesn't work and one style is not quite right, and if the inequity of the technology, the internet capability, all of that needs to be figured in so that we have the best opportunity for children to thrive, for parents and family systems to thrive in this otherwise impossible season. For we trust from this generous God who is teasing our imaginations with parables that we can trust, that we can go deeper into our journeys. This is just such a time in which the layer upon layer of God's love is needed. As John Lewis worked in the civil rights movement, he often said in his own mind that you have to work as if what you are visioning and imagining already exists. So when you might be shoved or something thrown in your face or you're called a racial slur that you are operating out of a place that is existing and in breaking of the belovedness of God yet down the journey. That you can look out to the herb plot and even though one action might seemingly fail, that there are the sprouts of parsley starting to come up on the earth. You are operating as if that is already true. As if the fig trees of God's peaceable kingdom are already on your plot and you're helping and seeking to provide some shade for everybody else so that they can see it too. Jesus says, listen, have the ears to hear what I'm telling you. For even if this is not the day when it can land in just the right way to take you, can you put it in your bank so that the same story in one month's time or in two months time or a year from now might land differently for you? Isn't that what the living scripture of the word and the Bible has to offer us? As we are different every time we come to the text and it yet may have something different to say to us. A new learning opportunity, a new place of our own aha, because God is generous. And the more we seek to limit that sense of generosity, the more we are relegated to smaller and smaller plots of possibility until we fail to see the community garden around us and that if we are growing together, how much we can do to bring up school systems, to support parents, to imagine a day as if we are entered back into that church, what kind of people will we <laughs> Next, we're going to share a video. The worship task group wanted to share this for you. And I like this video from the Young Chorus of New York City. I like it for two reasons. One, it puts a charge on adults and all those grown ups who are helping to care for children. How will you provide a space for us going forward? It seems to say that we might thrive. Secondly, Secondly, it says, at the end of this, and I take that to mean this particular season of uncertainty around pandemic, at the end of this, who you, will you be? At the end of this, who will you be? And so they take pieces of paper and they write with markers and they say, I will be, and they put an adjective or a way of their own being. So they invite us to that practice today. 
It's a response to a parable of Jesus to say, as if that generosity is true, how are you going to live? And so take some silent meditation now. And in our breakout sessions together, you'll have a chance to talk a little bit about the lay of the land, your soil in this particular time. And then to answer as if it's true that the good soil is also residing in there, waiting to be activated. At the end of this, I will be what? Fill in the blank for yourself, friends. Take some time now. 